Hi, good morning, good morning, everybody. My name is Susan Farr Farrar, and I'm one students. Um, before we get started, I'm going to give you a, a good cookie connection update date. So like yesterday, we made and delivered 90 bags of cookies. So, so sides of B Street from 33rd to Alhambra and the north side of C Street from 33rd to Alhambra all got, all got cookies. And there are cookies and cookies in them. So please take more cookies home. I mean, we just made it oodles of bags of cookies. Um, so, so all the people, Ellen, Brad, Sharla, who, br who brought these other people that aren't here, who also, also brought these, and Brad, and Doug, and Sharla, who helped hand them out, and Elizabeth helped pack them up. Anyway, there was a bunch of volunteers and a lot, a lot of cookies. It was a wonderful success. So pl please help yourself cookies in the kitchen. kitchen. Okay. So, as I said, my name is Susan Farrar. I'm one of Lama Jimpa's stu students. I took refuge, um, um, I could two, well, definitely in 2000, 2009, and I first retreat was was um, in December 2009. I did a short Vajrasattva uh, uh, at Vajrapani, which is a very, which is a very traditional for tradition. It's a purification retreat that we do over New Year's. Um, so that was my first retreat, was right after I took refuge. So uh, um, today we hope to give give you um, an idea of what retreat is like, um, why why we do it, why we take much time out of our schedule to do retreat, um, um, what experiences we have, what kind of kind of obstacles we run, might run to, um, um, you know, and learn. So um, you're going to hear about a bunch of different kind kinds. We I think I don't know what everybody's going to say. Um, but tradition, there's a lot of different kinds of retreats. Um, one of the ones um, that you're probably familiar with because you've learned about it if you come to the um, evening meditations is a shine or shamatha, calm abiding retreats. Those are, those are usually um, the ones I've gone to have been, have been about two weeks and consisting of lecture and a lot, a lot of practice learning how to do shamatha, shamatha. Um, there's deity retreats that you hear you hear about and happen after empower, empowerments and um, are a good seven to ten days usually. Usually, um, you can go, you can go stay in a big environment. A um, um, couple of uh, monasteries around here. There's another one um, up in eastern Washington. Um, and learn to live with the monastic community and follow their really very rigorous schedule um the other you can do solitary solitary retreat um the ones ones that i've done and probably the folks have done um the schedule is still is set by llama and and you follow for a day a week however long it is that you're able to take off off um since covid there's been a lot lots of proliferation of, option of online that's a whole different genre different genre it, um has only been around um in for uh for a couple of years and then of course all of us and many of you you were at uh, Lusfi ranch just a few months months ago lama doing a mahamudu retreat so there's lots of different chances and opportunities and a variety variety of each would um, suit suit disposition of varying kinds. Um, so anyway, that's what you're going to hear from us. We're going to start with Brad, and then Ellen, and Ellen, and you, and then me. And so I'll give, so I'll give Mike to Brad. All right. Well, thanks, Susan. Uh, my name is Bradley Yergain, and uh, thanks for for um, bringing this. I think it's a really useful, useful topic um, to talk about retreat. And I think a lot of times when I go on a retreat, I tend to, I mean, there's not a lot of discussion about it after afterwards at a level. And I think it's nice to um, to, tr to try to articulate some of the, um, the reasons why we go on retreat and retreat and the experiences that we have. And so um, Ellen and I recently had done um, an eight day retreat um, with Rinpoche and uh and I would, and I was, uh, it's funny because before I, because before I go on retreat, I always, you know, have to, to get time off from, I have a family and, 
And I always like wonder to myself, well, like, so why am I doing this? You know, why am I going on retreat? And I always think oh, I could go on a vacation with my family. And I feel all this pull to, um, with these different obligations I have. And I, and I was thinking about that and I was thinking the reason, um, the reason why, I, I, like, I like to go on work because, you know, we spend all this and all this time practicing, but we, we have a daily practice, practice, we come here to the end, we practice. It's really an opportunity to like, put, like, put our into practice, you know, you know, and to see what the, what we're really doing. Um, and so anyway, I, um, you know, putting the conditions together for the retreat is always very challenging for me. You know, it's like, it's like, I, I, I try to try to have all these different things that are going on. And so I'm always very, very surprised when I actually get a retreat because I'm like, oh my God, I've, I've, it, it's, it's, it's actually, you know, come to some fruition. And so, um, getting to the, getting to the read is the first obstacle for me. And then, and then even like, you know, quieting down and putting everything aside, usually there's some, there's some parameters that surround a retreat, you know, retreat, you know, retreat has its particular, particular things that are going always in my mind. I always think, I always think, you know. Number one, like disconnecting from all the the electronic stuff, you know. And number two, having some um, some you know intention, you know, this retreat. What you know, um, you know, trying to like let go of some of the things in my life that I'm I'm constantly like grasping at. And and so um, anyway, the the beginning beginning of the retreat for me is like a um, you know a dis There's probably a better way a better way to say. It. Anyway, anyway, uh, I think also, you know, I've done a variety of variety of different retreats. I've done some retreats and uh, and uh, at home retreats, and and I was feeling like for this retreat, I really needed some support, you know. And the benefit benefits of go, going to it is is that there's a lot of support, you know. There's also a lot of energy, you know, in places where people practiced and where there are holy objects and where people have done retreats before. Where also. And so, um, you know, land of the Minnesota, where this retreat took retreat took place, is is on eight acres. You know, in the Santa Cruz, and there's lots of um, you know redwood forests. There's there's there are also uh, um, like like whole objects. You know, and to me, it's like there's like there's you know, you, you go into retreat into retreat, but like there's the space in between the sessions usually, and typically there's there's. Well, I, I can't say typically because everybody because everybody has a different experience, but there's there's usually sessions that go on. In this retreat, the retreat that I did, there were four sessions, and um, and in between the sessions, um, you know, I would just get out and walk, you know, and I really I really like the holy office. There's this big stupa, and I like walking on the stupa and saying man, man mantras, you know, and it, you know, you know, it's another element of doing practice practice, and so. Um, you know this. You know this. This retreat. Earlier, there was a teacher, teacher um, Yang Yang Si, who, um, who was leading the retreat, and the top and the topic was mudra meditations, and, and uh, another element of the support element. You know, a teacher leading the retreat. Um, there were also um, lots of practitioners of people that had been practicing for a long time. You know, and I. Um, to me, that was a very, was a very support also, you know, I've solitary retreats before, before, and it's really, uh, it can be really kind of challenging, you know, trying to practice on your own, on your own in an environment with other people that are probably that are practicing also. So the retreats that I, retreats that I've done, I've always had goals, you know, mostly mental obstacles, you know, and, it, you know, and it was interesting because there was a woman on this retreat, on this retreat that uh, an obstacle of where when she would come into the gampa. She would have this respiratory reaction, and so her obstacle was was even being able to come inside. I'm inside, you know, and I and it's and so so um, my obstacles a lot of times are met or mental, you know, and and, I, and I'll this time the obstacle that I had a, I had a couple of obstacles that were mental, you know, and I um, I um one of them was like I'm like do I really belong here? Here is this is this really the way to be doing, you know, and you know, and it was really yeah, I was like. And so, you know, as the, the cool, the cool thing is, is as things start to settle down, you start your thoughts kind of arising and, and, and ceasing and, you know, and so I just sat with it, you know, and it, it kind of came and it kind of left, you know, and so then like, you're able to, to settle a little bit deeper, 
you know, and so, and so the, the whole idea of treat is you're kind of able to settle to settle a little bit deep, a little bit deeper. And it, um, your mind starts to get a little bit calmer and a little bit calmer. The, the thing, the thing is, is that, you know, you know, you, the byproduct of retreat is that your mind gets really calm and you feel, feel it's more settled. But I think, but I think really that the cool and important thing for me is, is that you get to see kind of the, some self, the nature of how your mind works. And, and, uh, and so, and so in a theme, um, you know, uh, we did four, se four sessions, you know, lots of really good, good um, addition. You know, you know, the cool thing about having a teacher is that, that is that I, it's kind of like we were being led on, led on this, you know, and, you know, and, and, uh, and, and being open to following the journey and being on the journey, on the journey, um, I got, I felt like I learned some, learned some really, um, techniques, you know, maybe not even new, but just reminding of how, um, you know, how these practices are super effective in like being able to kind of overcome, you know, our mental obscurations. So um, um, yeah, um, the retreat itself, itself um, you know, takes place. And I think that um, one of the other part, hard parts of, about, about the retreat is, is like coming back and in, back into the, into the world after you've done the retreat. It, it's, um, <clears throat> it's always really inspiring, you know, to feel some, feel some clarity and, and purpose, purpose. It's always very challenging to come challenging to come build and have to have to integrate that, you know. And I, I when I first started doing retreats, I was always like super optimistic, like, oh, like, oh, this is gonna stay and I'm gonna feel this way, this way. And, and you come back into the world and all this all the same things are pulling at you, you know, and and uh and so I think that um, um before I even ended ended this retreat, I think I had this idea of like, all right, so so like, gonna happen, and how am I gonna integrate? Am I gonna integrate this? How am I, gonna, you know, um, you know, solidify, you know, the, you know, this, and not just feel like it's something that got forgotten. And I think that the really beneficial thing is having a teacher, you know, and uh, and Lama Jimpa has been um, really. Um, it's been really helpful for me to have a teacher going into this process and coming and coming out of the process. And I told him this time, this time I said, you know, I feel like you really softened me up for this, this retreat. Like, like there was a bunch of operation that I did that I didn't even really realize, realize that I was doing. And then afterwards, whereas there was a bunch of in that I was able to do that to do that I didn't really have when I was kind of being, um, you know, practicing more and more with a teacher in this kind of environment, environment. And so, um, um, anyway, the, um, you know, had I just gone on like a vacation, you know, with my family, it would have been really ben beneficial, beneficial really yeah. had some, some good, um, connection with my family. And I, mean, I think that that's an important thing. I think also at the time, it's like, these are super important thing, things to, uh, this is something very important to be able to, able to integrate, you know, into, um, into being, into being able to do regular basis, you know, and so, you know, and so. You know, when I come back home, it's like I feel like I can be a little bit more open with my with my family. I feel a little bit more effective at at, at work, and uh, and uh, and I feel like um like um I've been able to try to practice some of these things that I've had all this time that I've been, you know, working at trying to um you know un understand and learn learn about. Um. Anyway, for me. Thanks, Ed. My name is Ellen, and I'm and I'm also a student here as well of, of Lama Jimpa, Jimpas. And I thought I'd share a little bit, a little bit about my pragmatic choices, choices that I did, the kinds of retreats I've done over the year, the years, and then also some of these things that Susan Susan touched on that she had to talk about. So so I've never done like go someplace for seven days or ten days and just sit staring at the wall, you know, for twelve hours a day. I've never done that. I don't think I could could to be honest. Honest, I think see, I would be I'd last like like half a day and I'd be gone. So I was a little bit. I feel when I'm on retreat that I'm sort of cheating. I sort of designed the retreat in a way that I can I can get away with cheating. Um, 
and so, and so I don't know if, if I kicked me off the panel, but panel, but <laughs> practically looking, looking back on it, I also noticed that the nature of the retreats I've done over the years has changed and changed. And I mostly, again, for practical reasons, for reasons. When I first wanted to go on retreats and retreats, in fact, I remember starting coming to Lions where our groups where a group of students was Lama Jimpa to land a medicine Buddha for like five days or something. I really, really wanted to go. And the student that was kind of coordinating it, I asked her, can I go, can I take my three-year-old and, and bring my, and my nanny, can I take my three-year-old? And she, because at the time I couldn't really leave my son at home. I didn't really, I didn't really have a great situation at home to leave him, to leave my son, you know? And she said, well, what, what are you going to do with him? I've never been to land, I've been to land, I've no idea. And I said, well, you know, they'll play and then at night, and then at night I'll hang. And basically she said, no, you can't do that, do that, you can't do that. And I'm like... And, you know, from what I heard, from what I heard, that was really retreat and I didn't go, you know. So um, a few years passed and it was okay for me to leave my son and with my, my husband. I mean, I lived in a house. We had four people. We were, ran our company out of the house. There was always construction going on in my house. The thing I wanted to do in retreat was get the hell out of there. There. So as soon as I could, I would leave my son and go somewhere. And I always sort of go someplace, place quiet. Um, and what I've loved about loved about retreats is I have some sort of kind of breakthrough experience, whether it's integrating one like Brad Brad said, or step change in my cohes cohesiveness or under. So the first couple first couple of retreats were sort of solo retreats retreats, and I went to a place Ananda, the Expanding Light, up out of Nevada City, beyond Nevada City. What I liked about that place, it's a sort of spiritual community. And they have a Reliance Retreat Center, and twice a day they do yoga and sadness, and they're kind of a mix. They're not really Buddhist. They're kind of Eastern and Western combined, but they're so, so nice. And you go there from any kind of background ground and do your solo retreat to support you. And, and it's pretty, in a sense, like you can camp camp there, eat all their good meals, you know, and do their, do their yoga and do their sadness. The grounds are beautiful. So the first times I went there and camp, camp camped in Belis. Um, and just for a few days, but it was, it was really, it was really, I liked it a lot. And for me, I live outside, outside of Sacramento. So it was one of the closer places to go. So I did solo retreats like that. And I would ask Lama Jimpa what to do. And I usually did a sadhana. So a practice, I did do Kala Chakra. So four time, times a day, I'd read the sadhana, meditate more and then more. And then in between, I would walk or, or what have you, have you um, move steady. So really we're quite good. Um, um, I did a solo retreat or two at, at, at their sort of station. They have a meditation, meditation center that's more traditional where you go, where you go and rent a little cotter. You can also camp there, but they don't have quite so many practices. It's really, it's really, it's very nice also. Um, and a couple of things, but instead of going camping, like a campground, I picked someplace off of like Airbnb where it's just a campground on somebody's property property to people around you know by a lake or something or something super nice to be in the, out, the outdoors i find it very oh just oh just very calming um, so those so those were first retreats then i noticed over time i'm i migrated maybe partially because because of, of covid I migrated more towards sort of, sort of teaching teaching retreat of course i've always done these ones at lotus view ranch when llamas offered them um, for a reason I won't go into, don't really, don't really feel like, really like retreat say, but they're quite nice in that time with Lama Jimpa is fabulous. But so now, uh, the last few retreats I've done, like the one Brad described, are more teaching retreats or some retreats with a master, like a, like a, mo a name petition mantra retreat, retreat, where you're there in a room trying to, trying to do this and do a certain mantra count and you're there with some master or some, or some manic master. Uh, try, uh, trying to kind of accomplish, you could probably not accomplish, not accomplish on your own, or at least not with that level, that level of support. And then the other thing that happened is I no longer live in that house with four people running, people running with remodeling, and so and so now I'm more of a little mom with like an, a, a college age kids and kid and two dogs and a cat. And so now it's hard. Not only is it harder to go somewhere, but I don't really, I don't really know where. So now I don't tend tend to go on so the retreats as, as much, and I've done I've done a couple of these online. The one that Brad described, described I did online, and it was a lot to cheat when you're online too. <laughs> I still had work, and I I didn't I didn't tear my plate for the retreat for the retreat, 
recorded. So sometime, you know, while Brad was out walking around the stupa, I was, uh, I was listening because I'd come here to listen to Lama, Lama Jimpa or something, you know, and I can manage a little bit around that, but still incredibly beneficial for me, incredibly beneficial. So um, some of my impediments, I like to find ways to sort of cheat for me is like, it's like, I need movement. I sit still forever. I need where I need to get up and move, still go to yoga in the morning, you know, do what I can do, take my dogs for a water walk. So get some of those uh, daily, uh, daily life in. Uh, yeah, I think that's what I want to say for now. And then I'll pass it along. along. Thank you. I, uh, I really enjoyed the logistical aspects, <laughs> which is like the first part I have. Skip that so you don't have to hear it, hear it again. Um, I've been a, a student, hi, I'm, yeah. I've been a, a student of AMA since 2017, to in 2019, before I studied Zen. Zen. And so the retreats are pretty different in my in my ex so it was zen retreat retreats i felt um like a lot of it was about uh letting go to the schedule they have very rigorous schedules and it's all organized at a group level so there's so there's like gongs and bells and clicks clicks and clacks and going on and then everybody like moves in unison and knows what to do and so it's just kind of like you have to let go of and go of any idea of what what i want it to just go along with the schedule with the schedule I view that as like it's it, it was very much like i had this, like i had this freaking external locus of control troll making myself a way to that way to that where the retreats I've done since coming to Lion's Roar and working with Llama have been much more like an internal locus of control, controlled as they, they've been solitary retreats. So to enter into a solitary, which I think, you know, I've always kind of thought about like Buddha going out to the jungle or, or like, you know, this like real lineage of these, these guys, these guys that in caves, uh, um, years and years. And so like kind of in an archetypal way, they, there's a like wanting to enter that that's of of renunciation. Renunci like giving up a lot of the lot of the world to go just like really meet myself in that. Um but then there's like actually like this very plain way of like like who I am and that I'm always on social media media and I like like to eat sugar when I get upset to feel good. And like take little naps if if I want if I want to check out for a minute. And I think it's really important to have it to have a teacher before going because of that. I have somebody that knows me. Me when I start thinking about well, what type of what type of retreat do I want? And like, how do I how do I want into this like archetypal space? Like, what's real for me? What am I actually capable of doing right now? Um, um, so that. Um, I just don't find myself lost on retreat. Um, and Lama always says to, I, he says, he says, yeah, you know, let me help you. And then it's like, it's like, it's like getting on a rich ship. He says, you know, if you're on, you know, if you're on your own, you're reading stuff, you're lit if you're listening, you're trying, you, you might make a little progress, but if you get with a, a teacher, the teacher that you connect with, it's going to just be like, uh, uh, real experience. It's, um, uh, for me, going on retreat, the like a lot of the primary thing I want to do is is meet myself where I'm at, and come to an understanding of uh, what this experience is of being alive. Um, so, like Ellen and Brad mentioned, and uh, logistics. Stuff, so it's important. It's important to think about like, well, where are you sleeping? Will you need? Will you need earplugs? Food? Will Will there be? There be? Will you have enough food? Are they I do with food? Um, um, and then your realistic social social need. If you need to have people around, are you are you able to be silent? Like for how long? Is there a way to? If you're if you're gonna be gonna be silent, like 
is there, is there a way to possibly get in social interaction if that becomes a real problem for you? Um, things like that should be considered along with um, your personal addictions. Like I, I always make sure to bring a case of of small drinks. You know, just I'm not I you know I have to make that decision. Like, am I going on retreat on retreat or in caffeine, or or am I going to this meditation gin? And I'm going to make addiction that I have, have, um, let's see. Uh, so, uh, another important reason I've found to make realistic decisions in planning with Loth Lama around that, because then I can like, uh, really make a strong commitment in myself to stick to the schedule schedule that's been created. And, uh, Reason that I reason that I think it's important is because it, because it's uh, it's it's related to my own sense of of intention and bodhicitta chitta and uh, what I want to do is find like the at the edge edge of where um, I can maintain presence with myself. And where I have to choose distraction, or, or uh, soothing, soothing somehow, and I think I think uh, that edge is really important because yeah, both. Excuse me. Excuse me. It brings me into understanding of my actual capacity. And also brings me, brings me to the place where I can learn how to increase my capacity. So it's only if I get to that place that I can start um, experimenting with how, with how to take care of myself, how to balance, how to raise my energy, lower my energy, all these, th all these things that I talk about in meditation. Um, so there's a... Uh, a Zen a Zen story around that thing, and it's um it's it's best best not hurt. Once you start, best to finish. And um, so dear Zen Zen teacher, what she what she says, uh, enlightenment is completely finishing everything we start. Uh, so Lama and I talked about this a little bit this week, and uh, what he was saying he was saying is. To use the the term the term training, we go into uh, repeatable situations with uh, uh, So if we can do it over and over and over and over, right? Create the conditions, and that's what we're doing on retreat. Create create similar conditions each 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 time, right? Then just for funsies so we know what we're talking about we're going to call it training um because it's repeatable post meditation or after that training or when home from retreat right right the structure of the situ situation we're going to be in everyday life is not repeatable it's complete spontaneous and it's going to call that practice this and look at those two things separately, um, actually a uh, continuous whole. And he was saying that like most of the time we think we're going to go and retreat and that that practice is like going to clean our glasses and then we'll, we'll come back, we'll have clean glasses, but actually it opens us up and, and we can see that it's more clearly. Um, and then the last retreat I, retreat I went on that like was really coming up a lot up a lot for me llama talks about like about like um helen keller and her teacher and the moment helen helen realized what the teacher was trying to just trying to do with so i guess they were at a well pumping water and the teacher was like putting her hands under the water and then signing water so Helen Keller could feel it, and all of a sudden, a sudden that connection was made that, that this other being was communicating water, water, which is pretty fantastic. Um, 
but what I what I was kind of thinking about is uh, that in this in this t- when some someone like like Helen can called blind deaf and dumb and like if cleft palate at that time like they, they would you would eat with your family because they would be like you're gross go eat in the kitchen right like it was a a bit harder of a time in that realm and how most people viewed uh people with disabilities and so what was really coming up for me is like is like well who is this teacher like what qualities this Helen Keller teacher have as a person where dream time period she's to just devote her energy to this person that she, she was possible you know that connection and, and to be able to communicate with this person that's right that's really to me, and I couldn't look it up because I wasn't supposed to be on the internet. And I cheat a little bit. <laughs> we'll just be doing hikes. <laughs> okay. Um. So so you've heard a lot about schedule. Schedule just to sort of bring together some of the really common things that are no matter what kind of a retreat that you're on there is a schedule and um it's much easier when you are in a setting and the soul's up on the kitchen wall and on the zendo or the gompa door you know know what you're going to do and you're going to do it and you and you just give yourself to it and so, and so um, doing solitary retreat, yeah, it's a little more difficult for sure. We are, we all we do a little bit of cheating, cheating, yeah. But schedule is is definitely one of the, the the elements that runs through every retreat. I think the other thing that I don't know if we talked talked about about, but um, at least in most retreat centers, when you are are on on a, an actual setting and not by yourself. Um, it's functional silence, so you can talk if you, talk if you really need to, you know, if you're in the kitchen doing chores or something, or something. Um, but other than that, there's, than that, there's, there's really, okay. and for some people that's really hard, really, really difficult, difficult. So the bottom whisper going on in, in the room and the, and the bathroom. So, uh, um, all your, all your, um, Meals are prepared for you. So, you know, Matthew's point about making sure you've got food and all that. So that's one of the thing, things, prerequisites, even if you're doing a personal personal retreat, you make sure you've got your your, your supplies in line. Um, let's see, what is the other thing? Oh, and oh, and when you're on personal retreat, retreat you learn, as every, everybody was saying, to get with yourself. If you're in a group retreat, Gotta learn to get along with everybody, everybody else, and they are all strangers. Strangers don't know any. Uh, seldom do you know anybody at all. At least that's been my experience. I haven't known anybody. Uh, uh, so, so you know how to get along with folks. That, that's pretty interesting practice to it itself. So uh, Matthew mentioned Zen, and that's what I'm going to talk a little bit about. About because um, it's it's a uh, 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 a form of retreat that is really that is really not in Arden, uh, and, uh, and it is quite. I find it really really beneficial. Um, um, up to 2017, something. I started sitting started sitting um, a group local group called Valley Stream Zen Sangha. They are in the Sacramento Dharma Center, which is on Folsom and basically Watt. Uh, and they share this center with two other um, sanghas, the Sacramento Insight Meditation Group and the um, Sacramento Buddhist, SBMG, Sacramento Buddhist Meditation Group. Uh, um, so there's three of in the Sacramento, Sacramento Dharma Center and Valley Streams, which is a Zen group. Um, I want to make it really, really clear that I do not pra- practice Zen. Um, I don't. I don't practice I don't. in two traditions. 
what I do is I sit one day, half day, or multi multi day treats with them. But I don't really read Zen literature. Um, it's kind of over my head. For one thing, it's, you know, hey, hey, Dogen, again, have you read a lot of Dogen? Yeah, yeah. It's, it's way, it's too difficult, too difficult for me, frankly. Um, and I don't have a teacher in the Zen tradition, although I have a great deal of respect for Jim or Jim Hay. Ellie Grindler, Katona, Katona, who are the tea valley strain. They are, they are really, really actors, both of them. But they're not my teacher, right? They're not my heart teacher. I learn from them. Um, uh, I don't read a lot of texts. I've got a couple of um, teachers that are out of uh, San Francisco Zen that I do read, uh, Norman Fisher and uh, Reb Anderson. Um, but basically, uh, um, I just want to, it could be confusing if you're, work in different traditions. You don't, you don't want to do that. So um, when I started practicing, seeing, sitting with, with Valley Streams, Streams, I'd been with Lama and Lama for, for seven, or, seven or eight years. And so I'm pretty well grounded in, in that and, and in this, this particular Galician. Um, and, and I got Lama's permission before. I went to start seeing with Valley Streams. I mean, he's known Jim for, you know, 30, 30 years. So it's it's not like, you know, he, he's, and he himself also done a great deal of, great deal of Zen in my tradition. Um, um, anyway, so the difference with Zen is that, that um, just a typical one day, one day retreat. They have a one day every Saturday, Saturday, every first day of the month. And the way that the schedule runs, and, um, oh, basically from basically from like eight thirty o'clock until four or five o'clock in the evening, and the schedule is tight, and you are expected to be in your play in your play time, and if you're not, not you need to tell somebody. So it, it's thirty minutes of sitting, followed by ten minutes walking. Followed by thirty by thirty minutes in, followed by ten minutes of walking, walking, and then a break. So there's a, there's a short break in the morning, a short break in the afternoon, afternoons, and a break and a dharma talk. But other than that, you're sitting in walking meditation for four and a half or for five hours, five hours during that day. Um, what that does, as you can imagine, you can go. You know, the first when I'm sitting in, at home during the day. Um, the first 15 minutes, you know, da, 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 right, lots of discursiveness, and finally I'll settle down, and so maybe the last 10 or 15 or 20 minutes is, is, is you know, I've got some depth going, going on, but this, I can be just the first half hour, because there, there's going to be another hour, and then there's going to be another half hour after that, and then there's going to, and there's going to be a half hour after that, so you can, so you can really, like, see a lot you can see your resistance you can see your selfishness you can see your barriers you can you can for me it really really works and the fact that i, I don't have to pack up i don't have to make to make a whole lot of plan how to get somebody to walk the dog the dog but outside of that is a 10 minute 10 minute drop you know so that that's that's really for me very much very very advantageous um they also have, also have a week long, once a year or twice a year. They have a we have a week long that I've also done, and that that that's getting physically getting to be kind of uh, difficult. Just sitting, I'm getting older, and so it's 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 getting a little difficult on the body to sit for that long. Um, the mind the mind is going, but the body's not quite so sure. Um, but I find it really beneficial. To have have that time a month, just really, really, really work, really, really practice hard for a day, day carries through. You know, it it the um, very benefit, very benefit for the rest of my practice for the rest of the month. And if I have to miss one, I have to miss one. But you know, still, it's it's I find it I find it very official. Um. 
And that's about all I have to say. So we've got some time for Q&A. For Q on uh, uh what, what, can you just repeat you said there was said there was a one near here was it with zen or i didn't just yeah it's valley streams Zen sangha um and they have either a half day or a full day they alternate on uh, the first saturday of the month and where is that just from uh the sd sdc the Sacramento dharma it's on Folsom base basically at the uh, out oh okay. so it's it's just down the street oh, cool cool thanks very right close and um um did you go on what I'm talking about about the second one? Okay. Where Matthew and I have done um what two, what two half days days here um last year here. We're hoping to be able to do more of those, be able to offer more of those in 2024. Probably not every not every one, but at least every quarter. Or every other month, um, just half days, but it gives you a good good taste taste to settle down um, for for some set to noon or something like that. Like that. So we're hoping to be able to do something like that. I have a question for you guys. Um, other than with Lama's guidance, how how do you use what sort of what sort of retreat you want? What um, um, like a couching retreat, retreat, uh, guided retreat. What goes into those considerations that you guys make to ask or request that sort of teaching or that sort of, that sort of retreat? I mean, is there just your personal dispositions, as Susan was saying earlier, or is there something like, oh, I'm, I want to learn this. I want to, I want to do that. I want to go in depth into this. This. What are some of your know, um, opinions about? I'll answer, maybe I'll wish each answer, each answer. So. Yeah, I, uh, for me, um, as I was trying to say earlier, it's sort of come to me, me different retreats at different times throughout the course of my history of my practice. And maybe it's a little bit like the kind of retreat sort of finds you, depending on where you are. You know, you know, when I first started, it was all about sort of settling in and sitting, sitting and getting comfortable with my practice, you know, getting comfortable sitting. And once I started, I started doing like uh, guru yoga sadhana. So amazing to do that, amazing to do that outside and comfortable with the sadhana, the sadhana, which when I tried to learn some as guru yoga, so it was like bizarre to me and a little off-putting. But spending that time with it and spending it outside, for for example, I mean, I really, and I was and I was committed to it. That's what I was kind of working on. I got comfortable with it, and now all of a sudden, these retreat opportunities are sort of showing up. You know, you know, name on retreat with Jada Rinpoche or something or something. How do you say that? Or Ma Mudra Atlanta Medicine Buddha that's on. I mean, I think something something happened. It's kind of a line. So, so um, early on, early on, I didn't know about some of these more advanced kinds of uh, teaching retreats, and maybe they've just become more prevalent since COVID, even you know, and knowing about them, them, and ask Lama if it's a good idea and what I do. But I think you know, part of it is kind of like that teacher thing where the teacher shows up when you're ready for them. So, but I I have noticed, and in, in it's correlation. I don't know if it's also that the kind. Of, the kind of treat that I've ended up doing is sort of appropriate, appropriate given what I'm at work on in my course of practice. Yeah, yeah, I'll be with Alan. I think it's kind of organic, organic the way that it comes up. And uh, uh, I, ha I have lots to do different types of retreats, and it, um, it, I think it, um, the circumstances have to be right, you know. And so, more what's go going on at the at the specific time is kind of more important and 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 uh yeah maybe your dispositions at the, at the time that um you're choosing the using the retreat is probably the, the key element it's a good question because i think uh for myself myself i tend to 
like kind of be intuitive, intuitive and emotional decision making. And uh, so kind of just like going, going towards my, my, like, like allow, allowing my dis in that realm to kind of fuel me in a direction, um, as opposed to being a bit more rational in how I'm determining what I'll do. do. And uh, I think that's, uh, would be a, a positive thing to bring to bring to the table sure when uh, making that type of determination for myself but uh, my experience my experience and i think some to what ellen, what ellen and bradley were saying arising rising organically in terms of desire interest st- and for whatever it to be kind of what what's needed for for me like somehow that you know but maybe that might just be the point of like this practice like that all the the practices ought you know when we, we get in get into them um, i also i didn't hear a lot i think we get a lot about like uh, the difficulties there are moments in retreat that are are extremely beautiful and and, and can open and it's not all just like grunt work work. <laughs> yeah. 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 Otherwise we wouldn't keep going back. Right. Right. Yeah. So um I just thought I'd I'd mention in case um uh this would appeal to soup um Several years, it was during, it must have been 2020, yeah, it's during COVID, um, and a, another Sangam and I did, did um, an online retreat together. Um, um, we both tested, and we, did, and we didn't have COVID, and so she came over, and um, it was a... a three or four day Vajrasattva retreat with Sebastian Abbey. We popped open the laptop, set, set ourselves up an hour in my living room, room made a bowl of ke- kettles of soup, and, um, and um, retreat together. She went home at um, night, and then in the morning she showed up, showed up again. And like, it was so support, supported, really, really wonderful. So you can do that. You don't have to have to, you don't do it all by yourself. So these online retreat, retreats, um, which are, can be very beneficial. Um, and to do them together with somebody else could be just really quite wonderful. So that, that's another option. Um, so, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, if another thing is that if you don't see yourself in the near future having an opportunity to take to take ten days off in magical place in the world, in the world, you can find little ways to fit the qualities of retreat into your life. Life. Um, I sent Patty Patty a picture of uh, a lot of our uh, snow Karen Burrow, and she and I we had kids that were about the same age, and we started backpacking together when they were younger, and we would steal a would steal away. To you know, and, and to go pra- practice during those packing trips. And, uh, and then it turned to, she buys a cab and I go and go help her clean the carpet, but we still steal away time, you know, time, you know, we died and do our practice together. So find these times. And, and I, I see, I see Elizabeth online, I spent hauling my butt out, out hiking, hiking. We went out someplace. It was just amazing. What day is this? So it was yeah, Friday, Friday out at Magnolia Ranch off of Highway, off of Highway 40, climb up this hill. And I got to the top of the hill. It was a beautiful day. I mean, the grass is all green around. And then you get this expansive view and it's warm and nobody's out there. And I just, I just had this overwhelming urge to practice. You know, I wished I had a little chair there in my, in my little sunna, but I mean, it'd be amazing to hike up there with a the member, you know, and Connor and I have gone out from my house and gone by the lake and practice. You can build little oppor- opportunities here in the temple and these and these half days, or somebody outside, or go over to their house and sit in their backyard. You know, to try to you know to try to experience of retreat of retreat. I think part break 
break routine, you know, the day-to-day grindness that we get our heads into thinking about so you can be more calm and spacious. Uh, the, the other thing I want to mention, because I had, I had Darshan last two with Lama, and he said, oh, you guys are talking to panel about retreat. It, he really made a point of this, this reprocess. And, and he um, spent a lot of time saying, essentially, you need about as much time as you can retreat to re-enter. And the re-entering processing process, they, from what I gathered, where a lot of the juice is, juice is the retreat's quite artificial in our environment. But translating that retreat experience to being with people, you know, and being in, in real life was really where he seemed to be suggesting a lot of the value of the retreat was, you know, and, you know, and integrating that because it's, it's not, it's not that we get enlightened on retreat, particularly, it's not that we get enlightened in ordinary life, but that, that dance between the two has really got some, some juice to it. So, so I'd be remiss if I didn't share his thoughts, thoughts on that. Okay. Okay. I have another question for you. If there's not no uh, uh, anyone else, how do you retreat both time, energy, finances, food, uh, other obligation, obligations at home? How do you fund this? Do you plan a year in advance? Do you get to scholarships? How do you do it? I think there's a lot of variation. I, I remember um, doing, doing a rich ago, I slept in the back of my truck and, and just camped on the property. You know? And, and it was, uh, you know, I, you know, I think, I think that there's variations of what you can do, obviously going to a retreat center, there's difficult to do in that. And, uh, and, the, and there's like, there's, uh, even, 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 even the, the retreat, there was a woman that, um, um, volunteer retreat thing where she was, you know, helping out at the center to like, to take care of things and, and organize things and, and, um, but you're right. You're right, though. It is. It, it can be expensive, you know. And it's uh, it um, depending on on what you decide to do. And I, I think uh, even even having a, a um, you know, play a place that maybe go, you know, stay at some at somebody's cabin or spend, you know, and having time to do retreats like that is maybe a, a like a way to do things. Um, you know, there are, I know Vajrapani, I, pre I presume in Landamet, they, they have, um, scholarships. So that's, that's entirely possible and you can apply for that. Um, Sevasti Abbey is unbelievably free. Now, now when I go, I always see Mason, but they don't. I mean, you know, you know, it's they just open it up. So it, that would that's really some beautiful, beautiful environment, food, comfortable, comfortable accommodation, a lot of practice. So um, you know, you have to travel to Spokane, but that's really not that far, actually. Um I think um most everybody is gonna offer scholarships, um, and particularly the stuff that's local. Um, SIM, S SBMG, um, Valley, Valley Streams, um, they all have retreat, retreats and they all have sliding scales. So the local stuff, uh, um, I think probably LMB, LMB also has sliders. I seem, I seem to really, so yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it can, it's the planning part is tough. Um, I, I'm really lucky, lucky, I, I heard, you know, I, yeah, I can do whatever I want, pretty much whenever I want. So um, that's not most people's um, um, lifestyle. You, there's a lot of plan ball for most folks. And, and so, yeah, you kind of have it. And you talk to Lama. Do. What should I do? Get online, take a look and see what's if it's available. There's, you know, ma major retreat centers all around here. You know, California, very lucky. We've, we've. We've really got opportunities. Hey, yeah. Susan, can, I'm just going to interrupt you because I've got a question, burning question. Um, Lama talks about having a retreat fund. It was part of your retirement planning to have a retreat fund, or do any of you have a specific retreat fund or Dharma fund or 
you know, a, a line item in your checking account that like, that's where the money goes. That's a savings account for Dharma stuff and retreats. Was that part of your planning, planning to retire? When I retired? Yeah. Um, all of this came about about the same time. So, um, yeah, that's a complicated answer. <laughs> and yeah, I mean, you, you, yeah, I mean, I, I mean, I, I plan, but probably not, not as much, as much as say, you know, Matthew, who's got kids or Ellen, who's got a job and Brad for sure, who's got both. <laughs> so yeah, anyways, yeah, yeah, that's a complicated answer. We can talk personal later. <laughs> Matthew, you should try recognizing it, but it's fantastic. Sure. It's a budget. Mm -hmm. uh, it is, and and uh, I feel really bad because right now, because right now, I'm blanking on what it's called. It's called. Um, no, I want to look it up. I would say the short answer to your question, though, is question though is. I also think that I think that. Um, uh, stuff arises as we begin to take dharma more seriously and actually practice actually work with a teacher then uh, uh opportunities arise lama often says to, to me that the to go on to go on the the merit created created to retreat uh is created created by our behavioral our actions actions now now let me see if i can find this maybe do you want to yeah yeah, that's right. I don't have any. Uh... <laughs> um, for me, in terms of sort of funding retreat, my scarcest resource in the last, well, since I've been in practice, has been time. So um, and when I was married, I had to work out the money spent, money spent. But I don't spend that much when I go and read. If I can camp, I camp, you know, because it's, it's cool. And so then it, it's not that ex bad expense, but but it is whether it's a time res time resource or a, a source you definitely have to plan have to plan and making it a priority is the hard part because it's easy to just keep going through our lives and not lives and not and like deciding deciding that you're I remember I don't know a couple of years ago when there wasn't somebody living at Lotus View Ranch in that cottage that you're familiar with I just said I'm going to go one weekend a month I'm going to go to retreat. And I did it, you know, four or five times until I, I realized there's so, fr so freaking many chores out there that it's easy to get distracted and start doing chores and get back to my practice. But, you know, it's, it's, that, it's that kind of commitment to, okay, you know, tell yourself next year I want to go at least for five days. And if, and if you, you, you put it in the ground, kind of like Matthew was saying, I think things will manifest, but it's, it's easy to not, not make that commitment. Uh, the place is called Rigsid Ling, which is uh, it's in between uh, Arcata and Reading on the two ninety nine. It's very affordable. If you, you can find them online, just come and talk to me. I can give you the information. Any other questions? I don't know. Any more questions? Questions online? Not seeing, not seeing anything. Uh, mm -hmm. Yep, we got a question. A question. Hang on. Yeah. Uh, just since just since no questions, um, it's kind of it's kind of a silly question, but one of the things hold the things hold kids are I think they're old enough now where I could leave for a few days and it's not really that big of a deal. They could stay with their mom, whatever. But but um, my dog, uh, we um, like like she doesn't need me. I need her too, you know. So it's like one of those things. She's kind of like part of my support, you know. Just, just and. Uh, so I don't know. I mean, I was I was kind of thinking maybe a camp or I mean, this is something that I'm, that I've been thinking. I'm thinking about first maybe just me and my dog, you know, and I can just like get away that way. Just like just like good like I was thinking like they have those fire watch watch towers and like things like that, you know, just like go way out in the boonies and just like just like live like a cave person for a while and just be like not even within range of anything any kind of communication, you know, I don't know, is, is that like a good idea or a bad idea? <laughs> Thanks. It could probably go either way. Uh, uh, <laughs> uh, uh, 
like the point of caring about you about you i would say like just a little bit at a time and and see see how it is for you like some of the like some of the logistical do get kind of dip, kind of dip um some of the like camping like on my own retreats i've done i thought like oh i'll be able to do all this meditation like that and then i realized well it takes well it takes energy to to get up in the morning when it when it's cold in a tent and like create food for myself and you know to go to the go to the bathroom and all these things like actually really require of energy uh when you're in you're in rustic conditions and it, it ends up takes up taking a lime then i realized it would also and i actually actually met i mean you are just sitting there but it, you know we're really really using the fatty the part of our bodies that like burns a, burns a lot of calorie active and um so it, it can be pretty difficult um to actually create the situation so you know i would, I would always recommend recommend to people just like really tall and these people that went off in these caves when i've read about yeah. them like like uh, they had been trained training a long time and had a really really strong network before they even even did that and even within that stru structure identified as very very special people could handle that handle that situation and then like the stories they tell like living in these caves it's, it sounds really difficult difficult like they get so always be like shoveling snow shoveling snow i'm like melting water and then like water would be flowing through their cave and they're like trying to divert water all day so that they can that they can stay dry like it's 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 yeah you know, it's like not totally really what we think is like from the from our from our view you know okay counterpoint yeah. counterpoint yeah i would i would say that's what for you then do it but you know, I would agree with Matthew, with Matthew, like maybe for two weeks, maybe take a long weekend or something. But if that's what works, do it. I mean, what what could be the harm? You'll get time, you know, your dog will have a great time. You'll probably have to do have to do more walking to tire dog so then you can sit, but you'll get some time in practicing that in an environment that you wouldn't at home, you know, if you can um for lack of better lack of better words, offload the responsibility of parenting your or your children, your children for that time, that'll be beneficial. So just, I mean, I mean, if that's what you can do, do it. I, I think. You know, I think my experience of doing retreats on my own, I, I think it's important to have some structure to kind of decide ahead of time. Like I'm like, like kind of a plan in terms of, in terms of um, number one, like what the, the retreat's going to be about and maybe having some idea about like the kinds of sessions that you want to do, want to do it. It's easy for me to get, get super distracted. Like, um, having a, um, having a kind of a plan, a plan, not this, it's all going to follow just like you kind of come up with, but I think, um, and the idea of retreat is to go and do some, and do some training and, uh, um, and intention before you, before you start about what, um, what it is that you're, you want to do. So thanks. Um, being mindful of time, I think we let's do closing prayers. Prayers, unless there's anything, else, we'll go ahead and do closing prayers. Crossing questions. Oh. Thank you, Hunter. All right, dedication. Due to the merits of the of these virtues, I may quickly attain a state of a guru Buddha and lead all living beings without exception into that enlightened state. May the Supreme Bodhicitta, who is, who is not, not arisen, no, and may that which has arisen not diminish but increase more and more. In the land encircled by snow mount mountains, the source of all happiness and good, Chen Rezi, all powerful Chen Ren Rezi, Tenzin Jatsa, please remain until samsara ends. ends. May the teachings of the Buddha flourish. May the upholders of the teachings remain vain forever. May all my bears achieve happiness. Happiness. May they fulfill temporary and ultimate goal, ultimate goals. Strong, magical display, display of the deep awareness of victorious ones. Merciful giver of a stream of profound and vast, and vast to the fortunate migrators. Please, 
Please remain our perishing, unchanging, unchanging, unfaith. Avalokitesh Vararara, great treasure of Abba's compassion, Manjushri, master of flawless wisdom, bride of honey, destroyer of the entire host of Mars, Sankapa, crown jewel of the snowy land, land, land sages, Sankapa, I make a request at your holy feet. Thank you. Um, any announcements? Cookie. Cookies. Cookies. Cookies and mysteries. I don't know if they're still there, but anyway, stop, stop. Okay. Um, I think uh, just check your calendars. We have some practices coming up for New Year's Day. Um, all the mantra bajra, which we've done for the last four or five years, which is wonderful. So go check the calendars. Get in touch with that. Um, I think we're um, giving a matching donation was successful, which is awesome. Awesome. Um, you know, some of you, some of you are maybe, new, um, but we had, but we had this, I think it's giving like after Thanksgiving. And, um, so those of you, those of you or online that donated, it was fantastic. Fantastic. We raised 4,500, $500 and don't people like you. And then we had a, um, a fund matcher that matched the $4,500. So we get $9,000 into our uh, bank account, which helps a lot. And I wrote, wrote a little, little blurb for the ROAR, but if it's the ROAR, that, that's like uh, funds of mortgage payments, payments or, you know, all the tech, tech on glass and a couple of microphones or, or like like a year's worth of utility bill, bills here, here um, or 10 teachers visits that funds. So, I mean, we'll use it, of course, to the course for a range of things, but just that extra boost boost is is the difference between usually a pretty lean budget here and, um, you know, and, and being, having our bank account be a little bit higher and not just going like this. So, so, you know, and if you didn't have a chance to donate to that, you're of course, you're all welcome. There's um, pretty good information online about how to, how to funnel a little bit of money to Lions Roar. So thank you. All right. Um, so we do have cookies and pastries, pastries and stuff, uh, back on. So hopefully. Hopefully, I just and ask more questions if you want. If you want, thanks. Bye. Om.